What's up, people? Welcome to Rare Reviews, where I rate and bring you an array of videos from the anime world and geek culture. Today I'll be reviewing the anime Fuka. Fuka is a 12 episode high school drama romance and is based off a manga of the same name by Koji Seo, and is kind of a spin off sequel to his other series, Suzuka. The anime is created by Dio Media Production, the same people behind other anime works such as Girlish Number, Honda Kun, and The Lost Village. Fuku is rated TV14, most likely because of its sexual fan service. This show is available to stream legally on both Crunchyroll and Funimation Now. So no matter your anime viewing preference, sub or dub, they got you covered. Ironically, there is a Fuka in the show, but she isn't the protagonist of this tale. Instead, the story is told through the perspective of Yu Haruna. Yu is a bit of a shut-in, who interacts more with people on Twitter than in the real world. He recently relocated to a new high school due to his parents' sudden departure to America. Because leaving your kids behind to raise themselves, or dying, is your only two options if you're an anime parent. Luckily, Yu doesn't have to live all by himself. He lives with his three sisters, who apparently don't mind walking around naked. I guess that's just what families do in Japan. Oh boy, not just one, but two overused anime cliches, and I haven't even gotten to the main plot yet. So Yu's life is kind of boring, until one day he literally bumps into the energetic music lover, Fuka Kitsuki. Or rather, she bumps into him. Okay, make that three cliches now. Turns out she goes to the same school as Yu, and somehow overnight, these two become friends. I guess it's because they both don't know what they want to do with their lives, and kind of have the same interest in music? Their relationship is kind of baffling if you stop and think about it. Anyways, Yu mentions to Fuka that she has a nice singing voice, and that small compliment was all that she needed to hear to finally decide what she wanted to do with life, which is to create a rock band with you and their new friends without even consulting them. Think of Haruhi Suzumiya, but not as entertaining. Oh, I almost forgot to mention, Yu also has a childhood friend named Koyuki Himashi, who is a famous idol singer that conveniently re-enters his life just in time to make a perfect love triangle. Hold a sec. Nerdy protagonists? Absent parents? Over-sexualized sisters? Instant friends? And the love triangle? Can you believe it? We have anime bingo here, people! Yeah, this show isn't winning any points for originality. Okay, let me try to be positive here. The band members are a well-assembled group of characters. There is the easy-going pretty boy keyboardist, who isn't interested in girls, Makoto Mikasa. There is the silent gentle giant guitarist, Sara Iwami. And on drums is the common relief punching bag, Kazuya Nachi. These personalities work well together, and there is a bit of band drama here and there, which I did appreciate. And now I'm struggling to add anything else in the positive column relating to its story and characters. The anime doesn't really focus on music or the process of learning how to play an instrument. It does show the music process more than shows like k but not by much. Which is a total shame, because I am a sucker for these stories about small-time bands trying to make it in the music scene. <coughs> Continuing my list of complaints, the pacing of the series is bad to downright awful at times. I suspect the writers were trying to incorporate as much of the original manga into these 12 episodes, but this story seems way too ambitious for a single anime season. And the whole romance drama just seemed forced and not even remotely realistic, even by anime standards. And on that high note, let's move on to the next section. The character designs are just... eh. They are so stereotypical with the anime media that if it wasn't for Fuka's blue hair, I doubt I remember what show these characters were from in about a year's time from now. The background artwork and the use of lighting is well done in the show. Most of the show takes place in the summer, and the artists do a good job of making you feel the summer heat by using the bright contrast between day and night. The overuse of embarrassed red marks on characters' faces got kind of old for me, though maybe that's more of the original manga's fault. The actual animation is kind of by the numbers for this kind of series. Sure, there are a couple still backgrounds here and there, and they use a couple of montage shots to help speed things along and save a few dollars in the animation budget. However, most of the time, nothing really looked out of place to me. My only complaint, animation-wise, would be during the musical performance scenes. The lip-syncing with character vocals was good, but the connection between the music and instruments left much to be desired. Only a few instrument sequences matched in time with the music, and the rest of the time was kind of sad. They would move the camera in just the right angle so you don't see characters hit their strings or move their hands up and down their fretboards. I know it might not be fair, but k and Kids on the Slope is what I think about when I think of anime musical performances. And for a show that is about music, I wasn't really impressed what Fuka had to contribute to the genre. The opening is a generic J-Rock song featuring the Japanese voice cast. The song is okay, however, they also use the song multiple times in the show, so it lost its impact rather fast for me. The opening visuals depict a colorful rock performance, even if the music parts don't perfectly match in time with the animation. I was more entertained with Fuka's ending. The prominent fast piano drum beat, accompanied by soft piano and female vocals, really struck a chord with me, and the high contrast illustrations of the show's heroines was a nice touch in my opinion. 
I did not recognize most of the Japanese voices used in this anime, yet the cast was exceptional, from what I can tell as a native English speaker. You came off with just the right amount of wimpiness. There are so many times I end up screaming at TV with these kinds of characters, however I didn't catch myself doing that with Yusuke Kobayashi's performance as you. Lin, who plays Fuka in Japanese, was loud and cheerful enough without ending up being annoying. My favorite voice actor or actress would be Koyuki, who was played by Sayori Hayami. I'm not sure what it is, but there's just something about her voice that I really like and is super recognizable to me, and it doesn't hurt the fact that she's played a lot of the characters I've really liked in the past. Switching over to the English dub, it was alright. On the plus side, Funimation doesn't use their go-to actors that they have been known to do in the past. The only voice I knew for sure was Aaron Dismuki, who is probably most well known for playing Alphonse Elric from the original Full Metal, though his voice has changed quite a bit since then. But he's still indeed a great actor, and he steals the show as you. Everyone else's performance was serviceable, even if it wasn't the most exciting dub I've heard. The weird thing about this English dub is that the music performance are not translated whatsoever. Instead, the audio track switches to Japanese without subtitles and then returns back to English after the song is over, like how Sentai Films handled Angel Beats in its first few episodes. I know casting someone to act and sing is very difficult to do, but Funimation has done this in the past with shows like that, so I was disappointed to see they didn't do the same thing here. Because of this, I would recommend watching this anime with English subtitles. I'm hoping Funimation only went this direction because of the time constraints of doing an English simulcast, and hopefully they can redo these scenes for their home release. However, I did enjoy that Funimation brought back some English voice actors who played the same characters from Suzuka, even if they don't have huge parts in the series. I love that kind of level of detail, and I'm sure it made a lot of fans happy. I'll make this last part quick. The original soundtrack is easily one of the best things about this series. The music helped made some of the most boring or annoying parts of this anime tolerable to watch. They embraced the mood of each scene exquisitely. It's just solid music arrangement done right. And I hope more anime titles out there follow this show's example in this regard. To recap, the plot is nothing but a humongous pile of anime cliches and they aren't even ones I like. The relationship building and musical process were nonsensical most of the time due to its poor pacing. I ended up being more attracted to the support cast than the main leads. The character designs were uninspiring, though the details in the environment were very much appreciated. The animation was adequate until the musical performances came up. I prefer the Japanese voice cast thanks to Miss Hayami's performance, and I'm hoping Funimation will deliver the same quality in the near future. The soundtrack and any theme song are amazing, even if the opening didn't get me excited to watch this high school drama. So with that all in mind, and based off my own enjoyment and preferences, I give Fuku a 2 out of 5 and a recommendation to skip it. If you want to see this show done right, then I highly recommend watching Back Mongolian Chop Squad. It soars in almost every aspect where Fuka fails. But hey, that's just my opinion. What do you think about Fuka? Is there any other anime series involving music you would recommend? Leave me your thoughts in the comments section. Got an anime you'd like me to review? Then feel free to put your request down below and I'll try to make it happen. If you like what I do here, please share this video amongst your friends and hit that like and subscribe button. That stuff really does help me out and I truly appreciate all the help that I can get. Look me up on social media if you're into that kind of thing. And last, but most importantly, thank you so much for watching. I was Raiden and I'll see you guys again on the next episode of Ray Reviews.